Hello and welcome to the Appian 2016 Product Suite Project Configuration Tutorial for Appian Web, Mobile, or both, known as Appian Universal. For this particular example tutorial, we're going to use a very simple configuration example. We have an existing PowerBuilder 12.6 application. We have a deployment target that for this particular machine, which I'm running under Windows 10, where I've installed a 64-bit .NET version of Appian Server. Note that the Appian Server also comes in a Java or J2E uh, flavor as well. In this tutorial, we're going to use Appian Developer's Configuration Wizard tool. I'm going to actually walk you through the entire wizard and point out all the nuances as we go from dialog to dialog. Note that there are no fancy things in this PowerBuilder application, like low-level calls to the operating system, no use of web services, etc. The SQL Anywhere 64-bit based database is being used, and we're also using the 32-bit version as well, because remember that the PowerBuilder IDE is 32-bit, yet the Appian server is 64-bit, so we've got both clients installed. Data connectivity is provided through open database connectivity. However, the Appian server also has all sorts of native drivers as well. And we're going to utilize a local deployment model, which means all the Appian and all the PowerBuilder pieces are on the same machine. However, in the real world, it could be on different machines altogether. So what is an Appian configuration? If you're coming from the PowerBuilder IDE, you probably know that you have a target which has a list of all the resources, PowerBuilder libraries, that are needed and all the classes inside those that compose your application. If you want to deploy it, you would create a project object class and then specify all the properties needed for the deployment model. That, for example, a native Win32, now Win64 in PowerBuilder 12.6, a smart client, uh, could be a WinForm, uh, could be web services. So the project determines the deployment model. In the Appian configuration, it sits inside the Appian developer tool. It also has a list of all the resources and how you would like to deploy. In this case, do, are we deploying for web or are we deploying for a mobile devices? In this particular tutorial, that we're going to start by launching the PowerBuilder IDE, then launching the Appian configuration wizard from the IDE because we have a toolbar that's been inserted in the IDE from the install that basically gives us access to all the tools inside the Appian developer. From here, we're actually going to use the configuration wizard, which is the far left hand icon. And I'm going to launch that and then follow through all the dialogues and explain to you all the different choices that you have in each particular dialogue as we go through. At the end, in the summary, we're going to actually deploy the application and see if it works. And then when we're going to come back to this slide and I'll show you what happens, like where did the application go when it got deployed. So for no further ado, that let's start the PowerBuilder 12.6 IDE. You notice on the bottom right hand side, I'm using the latest uh, build, which is 4098 at the time of this tutorial. The application is a simple word search application. So if we were to use the blue jogger and run the word search, you can see here, it actually brings up a dialog with a menu and a toolbar and another dialog inside of it, which is has a, a data window, which is a 15 by 15 grid of characters that you can type in one letter at a time. Of course, word search is used by students quite often in public school. In fact, this was actually written for my daughter and that who did this in public school. And what she needed to do was actually open that a form of letters that she's put together to build names. In this case, I built a, my own little one here. And you can see here, I put words here in the grid that like PowerBuilder, Appian, the word window, for example. So what we could do is we can add as many words as we would like. Uh, for example, that I could add somebody's name, maybe another one down here. That, and I could say, uh, save and save that particular form, which is great. That uh, we've now got, uh, let's say these are all the words that I need. 
However, what we need to do is create a visually confusing model because what we really want to do is we want to print this out and give it to your fellow students so they can find the words that you built in this word search puzzle. So the next thing I would do is hit fill and it would then fill this data window with random characters and hide the words. So you have to go looking for them like the word Armin here at, or the word Power Builder or the word Appian. You have to find that and circle that on your printed output. So now we can actually print that particular form and, and now you can give it to your friends and let them see if they can find the hidden words that you put into this puzzle. The interesting thing is when you hit the save button here that the data window that you see here is an external data window is saved to a text file. That text file is then saved to a blob known as a binary large object inside the SQL Anywhere database. So that's the basic premise of the application. So I'll hit uh, exit here. I'm not going to save that. And just as a little side, that let's actually look at the application itself. That here's the development folder where I have dev 12.6 word search. And you can see here I have an INI file, which of course has the player's name. That so I know who actually built this particular word search puzzle. Uh, it has an icon, some popular libraries that contain some objects, that a popular target, a workspace and a word search text, which I use for importing and exporting to the external data window. So you can see here that these popular libraries contain an application object, some projects uh, to deploy it as either a P code or machine code executable. We have some data windows, we have a menu, and we have a couple of window classes. So that's what you see here in this particular application. So what we need to do now is we need to transpose this to the Appian world. So in order to do that, we're going to use the configuration wizard, which is the uh, basically the far most left-hand side of the Appian toolbar. You can do all sorts of other things here in the toolbar in that you can analyze an application, you can uh, deploy it, you can run it, uh, you can debug it. Uh, so there are many options here that will be covered in detail in further tutorials. But for right now, we'll return back to the configuration wizard. And this is the first screen that you would see. You can see on the left hand side a set of checkboxes here that will highlight uh, green when you've actually completed each one of these steps. The last one of course is the summary which will confirm everything that you've done and then it will actually deploy the application so you can test it right away. So let's just hit next here. The application name here is going to be uh, word search. That and this is actually going to be the URL to run it from the web browser, which will be http colon slash slash your server name slash word search. Project type in this case could be a web, a mobile or universal, which means both web and mobile. For this particular tutorial, I'm going to choose universal. That way it'll leave all the options open as we go through the various dialogues. So I can show you both the web and the mobile nuances. The actual mobile name that will appear on the remote uh, device is now lowercase uh, word search. You may not want to see that. It's not very user friendly. So we'll change that to uh, word space search. And the icon, I can hit browse here. And we'll look at the word search folder that we can choose any one of these image types, that PNG or JPEG or a bitmap. In this case, I do have an icon, so I'll choose that and there's the icon that I can associate which is now going to appear on the mobile device. And then we have a description that will also show up on the mobile device as well. Then, so we'll say uh, word search uh, for students in public school. The other option that you have is in uh, newer versions of Appian, which is included, of course, in Appian 2016, is that you can associate a different background color when the mobile application starts. The default is going to be white. Uh, so for a little bit of pizzazz here, and that uh, maybe because your students uh, really like some uh, interesting colors, maybe we'll choose like a burnt orange here. With that, And that'll be the background when this particular application runs. Again, this is totally optional. So now that I filled in all the boxes, I'll select next and that, and it wants to know which power builder target that manages this application. So again, we just choose the word search target 
and you see automatically it knows what Power Builder libraries and resources it needs based on the target definition. It also knew that it was actually Power Builder 12.6. You'll notice here that Appion supports Power Builder version 8 all the way through the latest 12.6. I would suggest that you leave the checkbox, keep Power Builder target updated, which means if you change the target, that means adding a library, renaming, or removing a Power Builder library, that the Appion system will automatically keep track of those differences for you. You don't have to come back here to the configuration wizard to figure it out. The other thing that, of course, we're going to deploy to an Appion server and a web server, and these are installed locally at, within our particular environment. So it is possible that you could have other ones. For example, one that you use for unit testing, one that you use for quality assurance testing, one that you use for production deployment. There could be more than one Appian server that you're deploying to. So you can specify if there's a list of servers here, which one you would actually like to use as far as the Appian and web servers concern. So you can add in a list of web servers, you can add in a list of other Appian servers that you would like. And the .NET developer version that we're actually using here that local Appian server is all we need. So I'll just choose next. The next thing, of course, is are you connecting to a database? If so, then you need to know what that database management system is, what the database is. So you can see here we have a range of different database management systems that we can choose. That, of course, we're using SQL Anywhere, and it is configured, which means that your local Power Builder IDE does have a connectivity to it that knows how to do that. So we're just going to select that. If this wasn't available, that in other words, it was not configured, that we can choose edit. And you can see here that uh, we can go through all the uh, different scenarios here of what is the data source that you're actually connecting to, what is the user ID, for example, what is the password, and, that, and we can test that to make sure everything's OK. And that if you want, you can define your own ODBC by taking a side trip here to the ODBC administrator. Make sure that you choose the system DSN, not the user DSN, because the Appian server needs a system data service name that, or data source name, if you want to call it that. that. So make sure that if you're going to add one, that that data source name is done under the system account. So this place, I'm just going to use the uh, uh, Appian sample database because I've replicated that uh, blob table already in there. So I'm just going to check that. We can test it to make sure it's okay. Everything is, is great, not a problem. That, and we select the next button. Now this is where the Appian system deviates from the Power Builder world because the Appian system is going to use an N-tier architecture which means that the database connectivity and management of data transactions and data window buffers is going to be handled in the Appian server, not in your uh, Power Builder application, which is now, of course, either an Appian web or an Appian mobile uh, transposition. So what we need to do here is we need to tell the Appian configuration wizard that we are using a transaction object, and you could have more than one, by the way, and what data source it maps to because the actual handling of that data uh, connectivity and data management back and forth, the flow of data, is going to be done by the Appian server. So I need to select the Add button here, and you can see here that immediately it says, hey, you probably have at least one transaction object called SQLCA, or for example, you may have created your own, like Chris or Armin, for example, or whatever you wanted to call it. And it may be to a particular database management system type, you know, ASE, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, some version of Oracle. You can see that this particular one supports the latest version of Oracle, which is 12C. And that also Microsoft SQL Server latest versions are supported. Same with ASE. And that. Or you can use uh, some of the uh, interesting uh, databases like SAP HANA and IQ that for high volume reporting against a plethora of data. In other words, uh, tons of terabytes worth of rows. In this case, we're going to use the SQL Anywhere, so I'm going to choose that in particular database uh, type. Now, for at this point, if you're using the Java world, we'd actually have to type in the actual data source name. And it has to be in lowercase, and you have to be able to remember what it is, and you have to be able to spell it correctly. And that, So that's something that in the Java world that to be aware of. 
However, in the .NET world, we can just select from the uh, bottom drop down here, your local Appian server. You can see the databases that are here already. And if you don't see that uh, defined in the Appian server, you can add it. So in this case, uh, I could uh, add a uh, word search that we're going to use the SQL Anywhere uh, driver. And notice that I could choose ODBC here, or I could choose Appian's native driver for SQL Anywhere. This is a little faster than the ODBC world. The ODBC data source, that is I'm just going to use the uh, Appian uh, sample database. The username, of course, uh, is DBA, password SQL. And, and I can also specify, for example, the connection pool sizes, the timeouts, that, or I can uh, change those to values that are more fitting in my particular environment. Now I hit the test button here, that, and you can see that the word search data source is just fine. Note that you also have this dynamic option at the bottom left-hand side. What this does is, if it's checked, is it's actually going to physically connect that your application to the particular database you've chosen using those credentials that you specify and that. And therefore the login will be verified. That mean, and in fact, all DML activity going back and forth will be handled by your application and not the Appian server. Of course, that defeats the use of pooling mm -hmm. and that where you have one database connection that or a half a dozen database connections and you have uh, hundreds of users using this thread pool of connectivity to the database engine. So this is, uh, gives you a little bit more control, but of course you lose performance. So my suggestion is leave that off unless you actually need it, but leave pooling on. The test worked okay, so I'm gonna hit the okay button and accept that. You can see now at this point that the word search has been added and it's mapped to a particular database. So I'm gonna select that as the active one and press okay. So you now see that SQL CA, the transaction object is mapped to the word search data source, which in effect is mapped to whatever particular database type, which is SQL Anywhere. So if everything's okay, continue on. You may, however, want to add more because you may have more than one uh, transaction object because you may be talking to two or three different database management systems or three different database systems uh, or databases that within one database management system. So you can keep on going with the add if you want. I'll select next because that's the only mapping I need. The next thing is, uh, do you have any image files that you would like to automatically picked up and that uh, which will be displayed in the web or mobile environment with it for your application? If you do, that you can just leave the standard path to your development environment and it highlighted, or you can say also search all the subfolders of those that to see if there are any other images that I need to pick up. I was going to select next. Are there any initialization files? Well, yes, there is. If I hit add file, you can see the word search.ini. And I, what I'm saying here to Appian configuration wizard is I would like to make sure that you basically deploy the word search.ini to the, either the web browser or the mobile device in the temporary work area for the browser or the mobile device. You can keep on going here as well. And then click next to proceed. Now it says, are there any external files that also need to be deployed? So I'll hit add file here, for example, and we'll see that I do have a text file called wordsearch.txt. I'd like that deployed as well. If this is an OCX file, that, then I may want to register that with the operating system on the client where it gets deployed. And that This would only be applicable in the Appian web world if that was an OCX. In this case, it's a text file. I don't need to register it, and I definitely want it to be available in both the web and the mobile environment. I can keep on going. And that Again, you can specify, is it a DLL or OCX? Is it another kind of special image that I'm using that may not be picked up uh, from the uh, current folder, or maybe it's residing in a folder outside the developer's workspace area? In this case, I'll just hit cancel here because that's all I wanted to say that please manage this text file for me. And now you can see at this point, it confirms all the choices that you've done. You notice that all the green check boxes are set. So we're now here in the summary. Do you want to actually deploy the application now? If you basically say that everything's okay, 
and you hit finish. I would recommend that you uh, leave that checked and then we can just hit the finish button here and see what happens. So now what happens, of course, Appian Developer is going to read your Power Builder libraries. It's going to basically deploy your application to the Appian world that in the Appian server. You'll notice it looks really good here. There are no errors. There are no warnings. That You can also look at an analysis report. And this will tell you, for example, that you may have used some features that may not be supported. We're going to cover that in another tutorial that in a lot more detail and especially the configuration um, entity itself. That, but for this particular simple example, I'm just going to ignore the fact or just show you that the only problem we have is the fact that it's using show help. And there may be a problem with that. And in fact, what we would do in the web world, we would use the INET object. Some of you may have already used that from native PowerBiller. Replace the show help uh, with dealing with the INET object to get the help displayed inside the web browser correctly. But at this point, that's just a minor inconvenience to see whether it's actually going to run. And so I'm just going to hit the run button here. And now we see the word search application running inside the web browser. So we should be able to go back and run exactly the same functionality here in the browser that we did in Power Builder. For example, if I slide over here to open, you can see here that the template that we saw here in the Power Builder native application is already there. Except, of course, it came from the database via select blob. And then that was imported in here into the external data window. But now we see the same words that we started off here in the native world that were stored in the database blob table come back here into the web browser. So the, obviously the database interaction is working just fine. So again, we can continue here to add more words, make it more complex. When we're done, we can fill it up with random characters. And then we can print the actual uh, form so that the person building this particular puzzle can hand it out to their friends and they can circle the words that are hidden down in these random characters. You'll notice here in the web browser that if we go and interact with the printer, we see all sorts of different printers that, that are available here on my actual machine. So with the Appian web uh, running inside the browser, you can interact with the outside world, whether it be direct calls to the operating system or interact with the uh, printer control or whatever, just like you were in a native Windows application. So this is an example here now that uh, works just fine. We've tested it out and I can just hit the exit button here and we'll close the application. You notice that the close query event fires and then I can ask a question. Hey, do you want to save this? I'm going to say no because I want to save the template the way it is and maybe add to it later on. So I'll just say no and we'll just close the browser and then cancel. So there we are. We got back to the uh, configuration wizard and we did everything correctly that and our application ran first time, which is excellent. So what happened? Where did my Appian web or mobile application go that when I deployed it and tested it? So let's have a look at that by returning back to our file manager and having a look on the C drive, you'll see that you probably have, if you have IIS install, INET pub underneath that WW root. And then you'll see underneath that, that there's a folder that was created by the Appian developer called word search and word search has all the information that you'll need from the web browser's point of view to run the application inside the web browser. You can see that there's HTM pages being built. There's JavaScript, there's XML files uh, being done and all sorts of subfolders here that contain uh, images, OLE objects, uh, database uh, connectivity information, that session information that for the web world. So that's all been done for you when you hit uh, finish with the automatic deploy at the end of the summary. And we know it works. So we're done at this point. We've actually gone all the way through uh, creating a configuration that building a web application and that, and then we tested it. In the mobile world, it's exactly the same. But what I need to, in order to do that is to actually show you a mobile device, a screen capture of that, and show you how that works from that side. We're going to do that in another tutorial. So at this point, congratulations. You successfully built an Appian web and or mobile project configuration, and you've tested it, and everything looks good as far as transposing an existing PowerBiller application to your first web or mobile application using Appian web and Appian mobile through the Appian server. And thanks for watching.